It's time to finally determine your Kibbe body type. Today, I'm gonna share with you my top tips for determining your own Kibbe body type. However, if you get to the end of this video and you still want help confirming your body type, my color and body typing services are always available for the price of a haircut. I'll leave a link in the description in case you're interested. As you might already know, this year we've been diving deep into the 12 competencies of personal style. Last month, we focused on color type, and I gave you my three most useful tricks for determining your color type. If you've joined the free course and followed the exercises, I hope you were able to determine your color type and start creating your wardrobe color palette. This month, our goal is to determine your body type and start to understand how you can use your body type to your advantage. To kibby or not to kibby. David Kibbe's image ID system is massively popular, and for good reason. This system is such an inspirational resource for understanding, embracing, and celebrating your beautiful body type through fashion. However, in my opinion, Kibbe's image ID system imposes unnecessary recommendations on personal style for the body types. These bundles of body type, styling recommendations, and even color recommendations are what David Kibbe calls image IDs. And these image IDs can often have a strong stylistic direction. In my opinion, personal style does not need to be so closely tied to body type. What's really useful about Kibbe's image ID system is its use of yin-yang body analysis. So let's put Kibbe's image IDs aside and focus on understanding the body. Before we jump into yin-yang analysis in more detail, I'd like to assure you that it has nothing to do with fruits, triangles, or trying to become an hourglass. Yin-yang body analysis provides a framework for understanding how clothing interacts with our bodies without encouraging us to change, hide, or disguise any aspect of our bodies. In fact, it simply teaches us how to recognize our own natural lines and bring our personal style more in harmony with them. So when it comes to body type, yin-yang body analysis is by far the most useful way to think about body type. David Kibbe's image ID system is a massively popular subtype of this yin-yang analysis. Dominant features and accommodations. Yin-yang analysis is a very complex topic that would take many more videos to explain fully. For the purposes of this video, I'll assume that you have a basic understanding of each of the 10 body types, and that your goal is to narrow down which body type suits you best. As a quick overview, the 10 body types are dramatic, soft dramatic, flamboyant natural, soft natural, dramatic classic, soft classic, flamboyant gamine, soft gamine, theatrical romantic, and romantic. Each body type can be primarily understood by its dominant features or accommodations. In effect, your dominant features are the features that will be best enhanced when they're accommodated in your clothing selections. That's why your dominant features are also called accommodations. Accommodations are not meant to be a negative thing. In fact, it can be quite a relief to recognize your accommodations and realize that there are tons of beautiful people who share them with you. There are six different types of accommodations that you may have, or a combination thereof. Only one or two of the following can be your dominant features. Vertical, width, curve, double curve, balance, and petite. Starting to understand your own dominant features is the first step to understanding your body type. So let's go over the dominant features and accommodations for the 10 body types. Dramatic, vertical, if you have the dramatic body type, then your dominant feature is vertical. Vertical is perceived elongation or height in proportion to the overall bone structure and silhouette. Your perceived height is impacted by both the narrowness of your bone structure and the size of your head in comparison to your bone structure. Those with a narrower bone structure will appear taller or more elongated than those with a wider bone structure. Likewise, those with a proportionally smaller head will appear more elongated than those with a proportionally larger head. Because of their vertical line and frame dominant figure, those with the pure dramatic body type have predominantly straight and sharp lines within their bone structure, silhouette, and individual features. Soft dramatic, vertical, and curved. If you have the soft dramatic body type, then your dominant features are vertical and curved. 
This combination results in a naturally elongated hourglass figure. The soft dramatic has a long and angular bone structure with soft flesh that creates a lush, curvy, and elongated silhouette with a defined waist. Her facial features are also full and lush, often with large rounded eyes and full lips, combined with sharpness in the nose, cheekbones, or chin. Flamboyant natural, width and vertical. If you have the flamboyant natural body type, then your dominant features are width and vertical. In this context, width is a way of describing the bone structure. Width is perceived breadth or openness of the shoulder line or clavicle in proportion to the overall bone structure and silhouette. Often width is evident when the shoulders are significantly wider than the hips. The flamboyant natural is frame dominant and bluntly angular, creating a strong and sporty appearance. She may appear slightly curvy or have a defined waistline, but her shoulders and hips are softly squared rather than rounded. A trapezoidal hip shape is quite common in the natural family. Her facial features are slightly wide and elongated, often with high cheekbones. Soft natural, width and curve. If you have the soft natural body type, then your dominant features are width and curve. Similar to the flamboyant natural, the soft natural is frame dominant and bluntly angular. However, the soft natural's bone structure is less prominent overall, with a smaller difference in width between the shoulders and hips. Contrary to popular belief, soft naturals have a moderate vertical line and can actually be quite short. The natural family has the widest height range of all of the body types. The soft natural usually has a defined waist and slightly curvy shape in the bust and torso. Her facial features are bluntly angular and slightly wide, yet moderate in scale. As a result, the soft natural's facial features can often appear quite classic. Dramatic classic, balance and vertical. If you have the dramatic classic body type, then your dominant features are balance and vertical. Balance is a nearly equal and blended mix of yin and yang. Moderation in all features, in proportion to the overall bone structure and silhouette, and in comparison to the general population. The Dramatic Classic has an overall moderate and symmetrical, balanced appearance with just a touch of elongation and sharpness. All features and proportions carry a similar visual impact. Nothing in particular appears prominent or draws the eye. For instance, Dramatic Classic women may have shoulders that are slightly wider than their hips, but width in the shoulders does not need to be accommodated. In practice, this means that dramatic classics will not usually experience fit issues with one particular part of their figure. This doesn't mean that they never experience issues with fit, but they're less likely to experience the same type of issue all of the time. Instead of accommodating a prominent feature, dramatic classics instead need to accommodate balance and slight vertical. Soft classic, balance and curve. If you have the soft classic body type, then your dominant features are balance and curve. Curve is the predominant appearance of rounded contours in individual features and overall silhouette. The soft classic has an overall moderate and symmetrical, balanced appearance with just a touch of softness and curve. Similar to the dramatic classic, the soft classic's features and proportions all carry a similar visual impact. When glancing at a soft classic woman, the eye does not catch on any particularly prominent feature. Soft classics accommodate balance and curve. Flamboyant gamine petite and vertical. If you have the flamboyant gamine body type, then your dominant features are petite and vertical. Petite is the combination of perceived narrowness and short stature in proportion to the overall bone structure and silhouette. I think it's really important to remember that a petite woman must inherently have a narrow bone structure with relatively thin bones. Petite does not purely describe height, but also the narrowness and overall delicate nature of the bone structure. This is why the flamboyant gamine woman can have both petite and vertical. Her narrowness creates a long vertical line, even though she may not be very tall. The flamboyant gamine may have shoulders that are wider than her hips, but like the dramatic classic, she does not have prominent width. She has a small and elongated figure, small and sharp facial features, and typically large rounded eyes. Soft gamine, petite and curved. If you have the soft gamine body type, then your dominant features are petite and curved. 
The soft gamine has a narrow and sharp petite bone structure with a slightly curvy figure, creating a youthful appearance. It is important to remember that the soft gamine woman is primarily in the gamine family, so her bone structure is more dominant than her softness. Due to her gamine bone structure, her curve is more elongated. She often has a small and slightly rounded facial shape with large eyes and full lips. Often the soft gamine will have an ingenue appearance, especially in her facial features. Theatrical Romantic, Double Curve, and Petite If you have the theatrical romantic body type, then your dominant features are Double Curve and Petite. Double Curve is the predominant and uninterrupted appearance of nearly circular contours in individual features and overall silhouette. Those with Double Curve not only have a defined waist and rounded hips, but rounded shoulders as well and the arc of their curves is almost circular rather than ovular and elongated. The theatrical romantic's curves are her most dominant feature. She is also slightly more narrow and sharp than the pure romantic and may have a sharper jawline and facial features. Romantic, double curve. If you have the romantic body type, then your dominant feature is double curve. The romantic woman has a lush, curvy silhouette with a clearly defined waist. She has a short vertical line, small bone structure, and rounded shoulders and hips. Her shoulders, waist, and hips create an hourglass or pear shape. Her facial features are also delicate, soft, and full, often with large, doe-like eyes and full lips. In comparison to the theatrical romantic, the pure romantic can have slightly wider shoulders and hips and is therefore not petite. The line drawing. Now that you understand the dominant features and accommodations for each body type, it's time to start understanding your own features. The best way to observe your own proportions and dominant features is to create a line drawing of yourself. I do this with all of my clients when helping them determine their body type. Take a full body photo of yourself in a neutral stance, squarely facing the camera with your arms held slightly away from your sides. Wear solid colored clothing that does not obscure your figure, such as workout gear or a bathing suit. Enlist the help of a friend or set up your camera on a counter, tripod, or other surface at chest height and perpendicular to the ground. Avoid mirror photos as the mirror will distort your proportions. Then load your photo into a sketch app to trace the contours of your body. You can start by tracing any shapes you see within your figure. Be sure to trace the outline of your head as well. This will help you get a better idea of your vertical line. And draw a line across the floor at the base of your heels to bound your height. Then trace the silhouette. Draw the shape of your shoulders without including your arms, then the outline of your body down to your knees. The result should essentially look like a tight cap sleeve dress. Remove or hide the original photo and now you have your line drawing. Observe your line drawing and try to answer the following questions. What kinds of shapes are most common in your line drawing? Do you see elongated ovals, circular shapes? sharply defined corners, or trapezoidal shapes with rounded corners. Does any particular feature stand out when you casually glance at your line drawing? Try squinting to force yourself to defocus and take in the image as a whole. Even while squinting, does any particular feature appear noticeable? This could be prominent elongation or height, a well-defined waist, broad shoulders, or nothing at all. How many heads tall are you? Cut and paste the outline of your head and stack them from the top of your head to the line you drew at the base of your heels. If you're less than seven heads tall, you may have a short vertical line. However, keep in mind that the vertical accommodation is not limited to height. Vertical can appear anywhere on the body in the form of elongation. Process of elimination. Now that you have your line drawing and an initial assessment of your shapes and lines, let's clear the board by eliminating some of the body types. Petite. If you know you aren't petite, eliminate theatrical romantic, soft gamine, and flamboyant gamine. If you're very confident that you're petite, then you are one of these three body types. Width. If your shoulders are clearly not wider than your hips, eliminate flamboyant natural and soft natural. If your shoulders are wider than your hips, you may be dramatic, flamboyant natural, soft natural, dramatic classic, or flamboyant gamine. However, if you are very confident that you have to accommodate width in your shoulders when it comes to your clothing selections, then you're either flamboyant natural or soft natural. Curve. 
Curve is not an easy trait to use for eliminating body types, because as humans, none of us are entirely made up of perfectly straight lines. However, if your line drawing includes a clear pattern of rounded, ovular, or circular shapes, then you're likely one of the soft types. Double Curve Double Curve is quite a rare type of curve, which presents as a clear pattern of nearly circular shapes. Those with double curve will notice that their rounded shoulders and chest create a circular shape which ends around the waistline. Their hips will also create a circular shape which touches or overlaps with the circle created by their shoulders and chest. In your line drawing, this may appear almost like a drawing of a snowman with one circle on top of the other. If you're one of the rare women who see these shapes in their line drawings, then you are most likely one of the romantic types. In even rarer cases, soft classic and soft gamine women may have double curve. Vertical Although vertical accommodation is not all about height, you may be able to eliminate some of the body types based on height. If you're very tall and clearly elongated, you are likely either dramatic, soft dramatic, or flamboyant natural. If you're very short, you are either romantic, theatrical romantic, soft gamine, flamboyant gamine, or soft natural. It's important to note here that the natural family has no height limits, but the soft natural has a moderate to short vertical line, and the flamboyant natural has a moderate to long vertical line. Balance. Balance is another tricky feature to pinpoint. However, if you truly see no prominent or dominant association with any of the previous characteristics we discussed, then you may be very balanced and symmetrical. In this case, you're likely one of the classic types. Tiebreakers. If you're still struggling to determine your exact body type, here are some tiebreakers that I've commonly encountered. Dramatic versus flamboyant natural. The dramatic body type is much narrower than the flamboyant natural. And although the dramatic shoulders are typically slightly wider than her hips, she doesn't have to accommodate the width in her shoulders in her clothing selections. For example, fitting a classic tailored blazer off the rack will likely be very easy for a dramatic, while it's much more of a challenge for the flamboyant natural. The dramatic also tends to have thinner and sharper bones, with the flamboyant natural's bone structure appearing much stronger. Dramatic versus dramatic classic. In general, it is fairly easy to differentiate the classic body types from other body types. This is because the classic types are very moderate in all aspects. Therefore, the dramatic will have a clear and prominent vertical line in comparison to the dramatic classic. If you see clear elongation in your line drawing and you're stuck between these two types, you're probably dramatic. You can also look at facial features for a tiebreaker here. The dramatic's facial features will be stronger, sharper, and more geometric than the dramatic classic. Flamboyant natural versus soft natural. As I mentioned earlier, the natural family has no height limits, which may confuse you when deciding between flamboyant natural and soft natural. The difference here is all in the vertical line. The flamboyant natural has a long vertical, while the soft natural has a short vertical. You may be able to assess your facial features as well to determine your level of elongation. If your face is elongated, then you're more likely flamboyant natural. The flamboyant natural also has a more prominent bone structure and proportionally wider shoulders than the soft natural in general. Soft natural versus soft classic. Soft natural and soft classic can often have a lot of similarities in their appearance, especially in the facial features. Here, it is important to remember that width is an accommodation for all naturals, so if you don't have to accommodate the width in your shoulders in your clothing selections, then you're likely not a soft natural. Soft natural versus flamboyant gamine. The soft natural and flamboyant gamine have completely different sets of accommodations, width and curve versus petite and vertical. Similar to the previous tiebreaker, soft natural must have width. The flamboyant gamine is inherently narrow due to her petite frame. Although the flamboyant gamine's shoulders may be wider than her hips, they're still narrow and do not require accommodation. The soft natural must also accommodate curve, while the flamboyant gamine does not require curve accommodation. Dramatic classic versus soft classic. Deciding between the two classic body types seems like a very difficult challenge at first, but it's actually easier than you might think. Because the classic types are a balanced and blended combination of yin and yang, any small amount of extra drama or extra softness will determine their specific type. If you believe you are classic and you see any hint of sharpness in your features, then you're likely dramatic classic, 
The same goes for extra softness with the soft classic. Soft Gamin versus Theatrical Romantic. It can be difficult to differentiate the theatrical romantic description from the soft gamine description, although the difference becomes clear when comparing examples of the two. The best way to understand this difference is to notice how the soft gamine has an overall more youthful and fresh appearance, while the theatrical romantic has an overall more sensual and moody appearance. The soft gamine will also have more elongated limbs, while the theatrical romantic's arms and legs will be proportionally shorter. The gamine family is frame dominant, while the romantic family is curve dominant. You may also notice this difference in elongation in your hands and feet as well. I really hope you enjoyed this video, and I hope it helped you determine your yin-yang body type. If you're still struggling, leave a comment below and I'd be happy to include more tips in future videos. Or if you'd like a confirmation of your body type, my color and body typing services are always available for the price of a haircut. And if you'd like to learn a little bit more about each of the 10 body types, check out this series on capsule wardrobes for the Kibbe body types. If you genuinely liked this video or found it useful, please give it a like and subscribe for more personal style and capsule wardrobe videos. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.